finished stuff my Pete's Garage. Well, I'm almost finished assembling all the parts we're going to need for our next engine build series, which will be on a 350 Chevy that's going into a 1976 Corvette. What's going to make this build a little different is we're going to be putting on the Holly Sniper Auto Tuning EFI system, which is really pretty neat. But first, we have to get a block. I'm going to go block hunting. I'm going to Buffalo Engine Components. But whether you're going to an established place that sells engine parts or a junkyard, make sure you take some tools with you. Find the block you need, and I'm hoping to find a 76 block because I'd really like to put a 76 block in a 76 Corvette. Let me go hunt and let me see what I come up with. So here's the block as I just picked it up from Buffalo Engine Components. Just pull out of the, the vehicle, you can see it's, it's filthy. So when you go, you want to take a couple things with you. Take some uh, thinner and a, a toothbrush so you can clean up the casting number on the side here so you can take a look at the casting number. Make sure you're getting the right part number. We're going to look at that. We'll check the bore size, and also we're going to take a look at the the passenger side up in front of the engine because we want to see the serial number where it was made and what kind of vehicle it went in and what year it was made. Now first the part number on the casting is 3970010. That cast part number was used for the 1969 Camaro Z28 which was a 302. It also was used at a 327 and for 69 and it was used from like uh, what was it 70 to 80 something like that for trucks. So this could be a truck engine block casting for a 350 and the way we tell is you take your take a set of calipers with you and you're going to measure the bore. If it's a 350 it should be at least a 4 inch bore. It could be up to a 3065. And I'm just going to check real quick and take this with you so you know you're getting a 350 and this is 4 inches exactly. So it's a 350 block. Let's take a look at the uh, VIN number on the other side. The next thing you want to do is look at the right front side of the engine block to look for these numbers here. Take a razor blade with you, something so you can scratch off all the dirt and clean it up. First of all, you want to make sure you can see it. You, if the stamping number is still there and you can read it clearly, it has not been surfaced. That way you're sure, you're sure that your block has not been decked before. If, it's, if it, that number is missing, you don't know how much it's been decked, so you don't know how much has been cut off that block, so that would something you want to kind of steer away from. So let's take a close-up look at this number and we'll see what we can find out. A lot of information lies in these stamping numbers. First of all, since it's go going in a 76 Corvette, I wanted to get a 76 block, and that's what it says right here. The first three initials here, first three characters are C6F. That means it went in a truck in 1976 and was made at the Flint engine plant. Then you have the serial number of the engine. This happens to be 179,094 or something like that. So I got a 76 block. I'm good there. Next, we're looking at this number right here, which is it was built at the Flint engine plant on April 15th which is very important, so I know where it was made, when it was made. And the TYZ tells me that this was made for a 1975 truck, even though it's a 76 block. And it was a, could be a C10 to a 2500 truck. It was 165 horsepower and a four barrel carburetor. So that's what I know from all this information here. I, at least I have my numbers here, I can read it. It hasn't been decked. Uh, the serial numbers match, everything is good, I got the right year. Now we can take a close look at the block. Once you've identified the block you want and you want to purchase it, take a quick look, wipe out your cylinder boards, go in there with a flashlight, see if you can see any visible cracks on both sides, check all the cylinders, make sure you can't see any cracks. Sometimes they're there, you can't see them, but at least you give it a good check to make sure. Look at the deck surface, make sure here, the head deck, make sure it's nice and smooth, there's no gouges, indicating that you had a blown head gasket and someone replaced head gaskets. Look at the china wall up here on both sides, make sure it hasn't been dragged around. If someone drags it around, you'll see on, on, on the corners here, you'll see these sides worn down or rubbed on it. And this block is in excellent shape for a block that's now what? 76 is 40 years old, 42 years old. Um, it's in really good shape. So I looked at all of that. I looked underneath, looked at the mains. Fortunately, the bearings are still in there and they look like they're in semi-decent shape. Uh, there was no real wear indicating that. There was a crank that broke. There was nothing to indicate that anything blew up on this engine. And as dirty as it is, it's actually in pretty good shape. So now I can take it to the machine shop, have it cleaned up, have it magnaflux, make sure there are no cracks anywhere in the block and make sure it's perfect and we'll decide what we're gonna do to bore it out. Now here's the block as I just got it back from the machine shop and this is what we had done. All the cylinders were bored 30 thousandths over and they were power honed and we had to deck it down 10 thousandths of an inch because it was just a little bit wavy so we took it down 10 thousandths of an inch so you can see it cleaned up 
nice and nice and clean. As a result of cutting the the deck like that and cutting this down, the numbers that were here are now gone. So it, the information that was here is no longer there, but I have stamps. I'm going to restamp it there just so the information isn't lost for good. So I'll restamp that. I'll show you that later. Uh, and it's the whole box been cleaned, uh, baked, degreased, and even the back. You can see the back here is nice and clean. You can see those the uh, part number and all the uh, information that's on there. Um, it looks like it looks like from the cast uh, clock here. That's midnight. It looks like it was done or 12 o'clock. It was done at 2 o'clock. Day night. It just looked like day shift. So it might be uh, cast at 2 o'clock on day shift April 15th. So the block is in excellent shape and we're ready to put this thing together. Okay, so we're starting this engine build series off with a great foundation. We have an excellent block. Now if you'd like to follow along as I build this engine, please click on the subscribe button. I do post videos regularly as I'm going along. And you can go to Facebook, look up Pete's Garage, like my Facebook page, you can see pictures as I go along. Sometimes I post pictures more often than I do videos because the videos take a lot more time and they're more in depth. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.